What's going on guys, welcome back. So today we had the final review video on the Ravel VW Golf Mark 1 GTI. And well, it's finished and ready to get put on the shelf and this thing actually turned out not half bad. So let's go ahead and show you what what's awesome about this kit and what I did to it. And then we'll go ahead and wrap this video up and start a new project. So, as you see, this is the Golf GTA from Ravel, and first off, we have a bat, um, a stunning, stunning kit. This kit went together very, very well. I'm actually really surprised how well this kit went together. This kit's been up for quite a few years now, like, like, like five or six years now, and it, it's still a very popular kit, and I know why. Because there's so much detail in this kit, uh, what most kids don't have like such as like headliner uh, headliner handles actual headliner this kit actually has there's actually seat belts in this kit i mean this car this kit has a lot of detail and what most kids actually don't have which is really surprising and actually pretty darn cool so and that's what makes it that's what makes this kit and the car really popular from the belt i love the heck out of this kit so let's go ahead and show you what I did to mine, and then we'll wrap this video up. So, whole body color. I didn't go with a silver. I I was thinking doing silver, but I had this weird color in my stash. I mean, it's not weird. It actually looks pretty cool on this car. Uh, it's actually a Tamiya color. It's actually an old bottle. I kind of want to use it up. It was actually, if I remember correctly, it was dark metallic gray from Tamiya. I'm not sure what the number is, but... Um, that's what it is, dark metallic gray, and it, it's it's different. It's actually pretty cool. So when you first put it on, the the color is actually like silver when it comes out of the airbrush, and just no clear coat nothing. And then when I clear coat it, it turned to do this like greenish, like a little, had a little tint of green to it. And I think it actually looks pretty cool. I, I actually love it. So, and I wouldn't really say this say it is gray it's more like a silver because grays are darker so this is more like a silver version so but i don't care i actually like it i kind of want to use i wanted to use the paint up so but i actually like it. it actually looks very very good on this car so that is actually pretty cool the bumpers the winch wipers mirrors and that stuff is all semi gloss black and it looks pretty darn good um I did go over a different license plate frame. I didn't want to go over a Japanese license plate frame. I had put on a, I stepped on a US type deal license plate frame. So that's pretty cool. Um, this kit offers left and right hand drive dashboards. I went with the left hand drive car because, well, I'm in America. Americans drive on a left hand drive, left hand drive cars. So, but. That's actually pretty cool how this kit offers that. That's very cool because I know there's loads of people who would actually build this car as a white hand drive car because it's in their country. Uh, the wheels, uh, these are different wheels. These are from Fujimi. I'm not sure what they're actually called. I actually threw the package out, but they are kind of like race, race car wheels and they actually look pretty cool. I actually like how they look. So that's actually, I actually love the saddle them. They're pretty cool. I was thinking of shipping them and painting them different color, but I kind of like the chrome. I mean, it actually matches this, the uh, silver. So, I love them how they were, and they actually look pretty darn good. Um, this kit actually does come with an antenna, but uh, so, well, mine might actually broke in half because it's so thin, but whatever. I got like, a little placement of the like, that is actually flexible now. But this kit actually, how it comes with left and right, left and right hand drive. The antenna hole is on the left side, so basically that's for a right hand drive car because you want the antenna to be on the opposite side so it's not a distraction. So I went ahead and filled in a hole on the left side of the car where the antenna or the kit is actually pre drilled for you. I filled that hole in and I pre drilled a hole, drilled a whole new hole on the right side of the car because if you're driving a left hand left hand drive car you want the antenna to be on the right side because it's not a distraction but funny thing is they actually had the holes for the left hand drive winch wipers so that you know kind of saves you a lot of time but if you want to do a right hand drive car you're gonna fill in two more holes for the winch wipers and draw in 
two more holes it's actually pre-marked inside the body so it's a little more work if you want to do the right hand drive version but other than that the outside looks pretty darn good i tinted the windows not hardcore i didn't want them you know too tinted because it's a it's a it's an older car so i had to tinted tinted the windows uh the back window obviously I gotta clean up a little bit. <laughs> My fingerprints are still in there. But uh, I tinted the back window and I tinted the side window because the pictures I saw, these windows are tinted also. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. That's, you know, that's not really going to the United States, but back then it actually wasn't. So, but, and obviously the main window is not tinted because you know, that's really illegal. <laughs> so, but then the grill is actually steel with the decal. The red detail on it and stuff so that actually looks very cool i love how that looks uh the chassis is body color not cleared so it looks more like a silver but you know it's basic chassis colors it's body color and black basically and the gas tank and then the uh, spear wheel mount is steel and the exhaust is aluminum so that looks pretty cool i love how that looks and you know it's typical chassis style um Let's move on to the interior. The interior is a fantastic interior. Um, shifters, there's, there's even an emergency brake. I mean, this kit has everything. So like I said, it comes to the left and right hand drive dashboards. So you got the option. And the uh, door panels and the seats, I did a, a, what was it? A one to five mix ratio with Tamiya Brown and Tamiya Red. So one ratio of Tamiya Brown because that's a dark color. And then I did five ratio with red because I didn't want the interior to be brown brown, but I didn't want it to be red, obviously. So I did a five to one ratio mix, and that actually looks pretty cool. So I did that on the door panels, the seats, and then the headliner that this kit offers, which is actually very cool. That looks pretty cool. Dashboard is semi gloss black, and then the ground I did semi gloss black and then flocked it. Locking looks very good. Definitely see it on the back window. So that actually looks very cool. So, and then I went ahead and did the checker flag or checkered seats, whatever you want to call it. And I was actually debating to use them or not, but they, they actually look very cool with this color. So I'm actually kind of digging it. I'm actually so glad I did that. So you can definitely see through here. So they look very cool. I love how they turned out. Um, that's pretty much about the inside. The inside, like I said, there's tons of decals. I mean, a dashboard, they have every single um, like gauge as a decal. Like they have the blinkers, they have like warning lights as decals. I mean, the dashboard, you don't have really, you don't really have to do any detail on a dashboard because it's all decals. So you basically just paint it one color and decal up and it's basically all the details there. So it looks very cool. Um, the engine is a wonderful front wheel drive little engine. Uh, I'll put some pictures on the screen because I want to pull the engine off. Well, I guess I could. There we go. So being so lazy, am I? <laughs> but yeah, the engine is a very wonderful engine. This thing is so cool. The, you build the um, the whole engine bay separately, and then it mounts onto the chassis later on. I mean, there's there's at least at least. 30 to 40 parts in that engine bay alone. I mean, that engine bay is so detailed from Ravel. I mean, that's that's so cool. They took so much time in that. The battery, there's tons of warning decals going there. I went ahead and added a distributor wire and I went ahead and added a dipstick because, you know, it's it looks pretty cool there. Um, everything, like, the whole engine block is all aluminum and then the filter and stuff's black, rear black. And you know, it looks very cool. I love how the engine bay looks. The engine, very detailed. I'm sure you can detail the heck out of this, but you know, I do do my typical with the engine bay wires. That's more than enough for me. I'm more happy than that. So, but yeah, the engine bay, they Ravel really knocked that out of the park. I mean, that looks so good in there. But only thing that I do want to mention is only one problem with this kit. There's only one, which is actually very surprising. When you mount the chassis to the body with the interior, you're going to have one heck of a time getting the engine bay in. So what I did, I went ahead and snapped the 
engine bay off from the chassis and then I went ahead and mounted it into the body first with the interior because it's actually a very, very tight squeeze. So keep your engine bay off the chassis and then once you get the engine bay in, it actually just clicks in and I glued the little mount of points on the side of the body which just stays in perfectly and then you can put your chassis on after. The chassis was slightly in right after, no problem. So just a little tip if you can build this. Make, just keep the engine bay off the chassis. Put your, all your chassis parts on. Put your axles on and stuff. It'll be just fine. Put your exhaust in. And then put the engine bay in the body with the interior first. Because, you know, like I said, it's a very tight squeeze. Because you're going to have one heck of a time doing it with the chassis. Not to the, uh, you know, the, the engine bay mounted to the chassis. So, because you got to get in there with a really, really weird angle to get it in there. But... Once it's in there, it clicks in, and then the chassis slides right in, no problem. So, don't worry about that. Make sure, you know, one little tip, just put the engine bay in first, lift the interior, and then you're gonna save yourself one heck of a lot of one, I should say. But other than that, that's gonna be it for this build. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know, go, let me know what you guys think. Stay tuned to the end of the video, as it will be slideshow of it in a photo booth. And then go to my other channel to see the full slideshow of this thing being built from the ground up. But until my next video, guys, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye for now.